Hi everybody, I thought it was time I did an update on the Jalico now that I'm settled in at the new workshop and I've had time to play with it. I've got two things that we're going to show you on it today. One of them is the Game Elf 3 Mini, which is in there at the moment, and we're going to switch that on. And then I also have a Pi to Jammer adapter, which is also in there but not connected up. So first of all, I want to show you the Game Elf Mini and why I think it's not very good quickly show you the video quality and also something that when I first turned it on that caught me out so let's have a look at that first then we'll swap it over to the Pi to Jammer and I'll talk about that so I'm going to turn the lights off so that we can get a better picture and get set up to show you the video quality of this Game Elf Mini Okay, so when if you first switch it in, the factory defaults, nothing works. So as a first time user for something like one of these game elves or Pandora's box, if you don't know much about them, this will totally catch you out. Now, I was in the process of finishing the wiring loom on this and I didn't have credits set up at the time. I couldn't get it to work. I spent ages and then eventually um, read somewhere that you need to put credits in. So I, I had to wire up credits and then when you've got credits in then you can go in and select from the games. If you have a service button set up or you press the button on the side you can go in and you change Credit game mode anytime. Then it doesn't matter if you've got credits in or not, you can go through the list. You can't actually start the game unless you've got credits in, and you can't put it on free play. So those those two things were really frustrating. No no free play and not being able to choose games unless you've got credits in when you first switch it on. So for new users, I thought that they would catch people out. So the next thing that I don't like is the actual quality of the video. So again, this was something that I was uh, doing while I was building this cabinet. I thought this would be a good easy way to get things working and to test. But um, the video quality of this is just shocking. I don't know if my unit is faulty so we'll just go into this because you can see it on the background on the top corner you see all the noise in the background just there it's only on this game off it's not on the Neo Geo and it's not on the Raspberry Pi with the Jammer adapter it's only on this game off so that was another thing that I didn't like about this unit. One last thing that I didn't like about this unit is the fact that it's basically just Neo Geo stuff with a few Capcom fighting games and uh, hardly any classics at all. So the game list was also really disappointing. Now I know it was only like £35 but still the quality of the video their game list and how the, how the coins work and how the credits work I instantly didn't like it and just wanted to change it so now I'm going to show you what I've changed it to it's just... so this is the Game Off Mini and I'm just going to take this out and then I'll talk about the other setup that's in here. So we can see this is just a standard jammer harness and and here we have a Raspberry Pi to jammer board which I brought from Arcade Forge. So underneath there is a Pi 3B and it just has a jammer edge connector. So I'm actually just going to swap that over 
Now this is only set up for uh, five buttons. So on this side we just have a screw terminal and I'm just going to put on this player six buttons. There's also a ground on there as well. So now we can take this little game elf out. And without doing anything else, we can get this going. Um, I 3D printed the stand so that uh, the pie's got support underneath. You have an audio jack, the pie to jammer board has got a video amplifier and also an audio amplifier. So it brings the video levels up to the right levels for the CRT. Um, I just 3D printed some brackets to hold the keyboard in place and that just plugs into the Pi as normal. So we just slide that back in, lights off again. And it boots straight into a system specifically for working on the CRT. I chose this which is pin HP and this is an image that you can get from the Pi to Jamma website which is pi to jamma.info. I'll put details in the description. You download this image and just burn it to the SD card like you would any other Pi image. Uh, and it actually puts uh, 100 games on there for you. It's actually really easy to copy games over. You can put them onto a USB key and plug it in. Or you can take the SD card out and you can actually see the file system where the ROMs are stored. And you can just drag them across. Now, if we just go in, it's automatically set up for the Pi to Jammer interface. And once you're into it, all you need to do is just go into the actual like main settings to choose and change your keys around. So just press the button to go into the game. And there we go. So if we credit up. And then when you want to change game, press player one, button one and two. Goes back to the menu. You can just go back, choose a different game. This is running Advanced Meme 3.9. Um, so really, I, I found it's been really good. I've also put a couple of ROMs on, but at the moment I didn't have uh, videos for them. But if we go into R Type, because these are running native. They all have slightly different resolutions. So some of them are in slightly different positions. Some of them are actually like warped as well. You can stretch it like within the software. So it's kind of stretched as it comes over like a barrel so that it can fit more of the game onto one screen. But it, it looks really good.
we go into a, a newer game. So this, this, I'm just going to bring this back. So there's one thing that I would like to be able to do, which is to get the service or test button to bring up the menu for main. Um, it didn't seem to want to take those keys for programming. But if we just go back to the system, we just press tab and then we can get into the menu. So one of the things that I really liked about this version of MAME is the video options. So we can go in and we can choose various options for the screen resolution. And it will rescale it and change the sizes, it's really flexible. But there's also options where it will stretch it or shrink it depending on if bits are missing off the screen and then once you've got it set up how you want you can go in and you can save the resolution for this game or you can save the resolution for all the games that match this or just the resolution so if, if you take time to set one of them up it will remember that for all of the games that are very similar to it I thought that was really really clever and then obviously you've got the normal input options and input for this games. So the, the version of MAME that comes on this pin HP I thought was really good. And the way that this software works with CRT and the resolutions again I thought it was really really good. So here's an example of where it's not showing the right video resolution. So if we go into video, So it has, <coughs> it needs resizing basically. Because the video resolution has got a multiplier on there, and then we resize it, it then widens it to be the correct value. So, oops. So if we save for this game, save for this game of frequency. Return to game. Oh, you can also choose it to automatically start a single game. You can create your favourites list and I really liked that it had a monitor test card in there to help set the screen up. So I think that's it for this video. I'm really impressed with the Pi 2 Jammer adapter and this Pin HP emulation system. I'll spend a bit more time with it and figure out how to get the videos working. But uh, I think that's it. So I'm really pleased with the Low Pro. I really like the cabinet. and. Uh, this Python jammer is going to stay in there. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.